Klaus Fascher, the next boxer, was responsible for the safety of young English bands in Hamburg. He was privy to many of the Beatles' early secrets. I remember one night when he came to me and say, and we're saying, Horst, can you believe we signed one autograph card from us and we made all, we all four made love to one girl. It wasn't just girls that were on offer to young English rockers. Monica's bar was Hamburg's notorious transvestite club. For one or two English musicians, Monica's was just another part of the Hamburg experience. One night, uh, Monica said, come, come, come and look, one of the... One of your boys is in a separate. And I said, who is it? She said, one of the Beatles. I said, let me let me have a look. She said, you have to be careful. Look only, you know, sneaky like. So but what I did, I grabbed that curtain and put it on the side. There was Sid and John in uh, in the position with, with that girl, you know. And uh, he felt really ashamed. He did like that and I said, John, don't worry, man. I did that all before. With time on their hands, the impressionable Beatles became friendly with beat poet Royston Ellis. This sophisticated southerner introduced them to the habit of a lifetime. As the Beatles rose to fame, Lennon kept up with his old friend, Royston Ellis. I would think that John was ambisexual. He was curious, he was willing to experiment. Uh, if you're asking me, did I have a personal experience? I can say that yes, but there was a girl between us. I took John back to the flat where I was living with a girl, and she, myself and John, we spent the night together. August 1963, Lennon met up with his friend on a tour stop in Guernsey. I took John back to the flat where I was living with a girl and she, myself and John, we spent the night together. And the reason for this was not just the sex side, but I'd written a poem which John liked and in, uh, there was a line, I long to have sex on black leather sheets and ride motorcycles between your thighs. Well, we didn't have any black leather sheets. We had to make do with black polythene and black oil skins. <laughs> By the beginning of 1964, the Beatles had taken Europe, and it was time to go global. On the 7th of February, the band left for America. Cynthia Lennon, who had been kept behind clothes. The Beatles exuded a charisma that got them noticed. Paul's personality, he was sort of like a diva like he is today. He was sort of, we thought he, I thought he was a queer. I did. For months I thought he was a queer. I thought I'm looking, not letting him touch me. Because the first time I saw him, when he, when he came in the strip club I was playing at, he had these eyebrows that looked like penciled eyebrows. You know? I said, that's not normal. Wild West situation. Home was at the Bambikino, a squalid room behind a local cinema screen. It was a rough start. Klaus Vormann, a close friend of the Beatles in Hamburg gained a unique glimpse of the band's backstage life, something that was recreated in his vivid artwork of the time. They had to wash in the man's toilet. So when they woke up and wanted to go for a wash, it could happen, and it did happen, that a man would stand next to them having a pee. Tony Sheridan, Hamburg's best-known English rocker, shared a room and a few bad habits with the boys. We didn't have a lot of gear to wear. 